Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm hoping Missy will stay with us. We'll see how this goes. She can be a little antsy. <laughs> but I am here to talk about the 2019 finalists list for the Sammy Roar Prize. The Sammy Roar Prize is awarded annually to emerging Jewish writers in either fiction or nonfiction, with odd years being fiction years. Uh, so this is a uh, fiction finalists list. And you will find that I have an entire playlist uh, of reviewing uh, several of the finalists starting um, from the first year that the prize was uh, awarded uh, up until now. So anyway, on April 1st, uh, the Jewish Book Council, which helps officiate these, uh, this award, uh, announced the finalists list for uh, this year, and it includes uh, titles that have been published in the last two years. And the finalists are The Weight of Ink by Rachel Kadish, the Last Watchman of Old Cairo by Michael David Lucas, The Worlds We Think We Know, short stories by Dahlia Rosenfeld, Memento Park by Mark Sarvas, and Underground Fugue by Margot Singer. And uh, the other four works are all novels, just FYI. And so I thought I would take this time to do a prediction of who I think will win, although <laughs> it's complete crap, really. <laughs> like, I'm thinking of the Academy Awards and how people predict uh, who they think are going to win based on whether or not they won X award or lost Y award, and there's a whole sort of statistical uh, <laughs> game going on behind the scenes. And I figure if I looked at all of the uh, winners of the past year that maybe I could find some sort of pattern. <laughs> but I haven't done that. <laughs> that, takes, uh, that, that takes too much time. It's not fun. <laughs> so instead I thought I'd just, uh, you know, be random about it. <laughs> Tell you a little bit about the books and my thoughts. And I also did um, collect a bunch of the awards that these uh, books or, or stories won that I mostly found through their Amazon pages. <laughs> So the first book on the list is The Weight of Ink by Rachel Kadish. I've read this book. This was the first book I read this year, and it remains my favorite read of the year. It's absolutely stunning. It's a sprawling work of historical fiction taking place both in the present day and in uh, 17th century London. And a uh, historian of that time period uh, finds this huge find, a brand new Jewish scribe from the 17th century who happens to be a woman. Mostly because Rachel Kadish wants to answer the question uh, that Virginia Woolf uh, posed a long time ago <laughs> uh, of whether it would be possible for a woman to be a writer during that age. And so she found a way, and in a Jewish context, and it's, fa it's wonderful. <laughs> and of course the past goes into this woman's life, and uh, we get to of course see it much more intimately than <laughs> any historian could, even with a DeLorean. <laughs> Oh, but it's just sprawling and deeply human, uh, both in the past and the present, because obviously the present isn't uh, just about looking at the past, but those characters also have a lot of dimension about who they are and what draws them to their work. And it's just it's just wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. I, I kind of, uh, on its surface, think it uh, has uh, absolutely no chance of losing, but, you know, who knows? <laughs> and so here are some of the other awards that uh, The Weight of Ink has won. It's won the 2017 National Jewish Book Awards and for the Book Club Award. Isn't that exciting, Missy? <laughs> it's won uh, Boston's Julia Award Howe Prize for Fiction. It's the winner of the Association of Jewish Libraries Jewish Fiction Award. It's an Amazon Best Book of the Year. And, certainly most importantly to all of us on BookTube, it made the Steve Reads list of Best Historical Fiction of 2017. The second book on the finalist list I actually have out from the library. This is The Last Watchman of Old Cairo by Michael David Lucas. Uh, and actually, I think it's somewhat similar to The Weight of Ink because it's a historical fiction novel but also has a lot of ties to the present. This one is about familial ties where um, in the present uh, somebody is uh, in touch with their family history, I believe. I haven't read this yet, but uh, the family history is that uh, the this protagonist has a uh, interfaith Jewish and Muslim uh, family in the Cairo area, and we go back into the past, where for generations the Muslim side of his family actually uh, was charged with protecting the Jewish synagogue in Cairo. So I think this is going to be good. I really have uh, high hopes for this. I just can't imagine it being better than The Weight of Ink, but I still have high hopes! 
And here's some of the awards that this has won. It is the winner of the American Library Association Sophie Brody Award, the winner of the 2018 National Jewish Book Award in Fiction. Uh, it's named one of the top best books of the year by BBC. And it's a Penguin Random House International One World One Book Selection. It's pretty cool. Next we have The Worlds We Think We Know by Dahlia Rosenfeld, uh, the collection of short stories. I read this as well last year. I wasn't ultimately very impressed with it. I think it was a little too surrealist for me uh, in some ways. Uh, I'll link my review down below and also for The Weight of Ink. I couldn't find the book winning any awards, but I went to Rosenfeld's professorial page and I found that uh, several of the stories won their own awards, so I figured I'd shout them out. Uh, Floating on Water won uh, the Editor's Choice Award for Carve Magazine. Swan Street won the Tobias Wolf Award for Fiction at the Bellingham Review, judged by Robin Hemley. And Bargaborg Remembers uh, won the Mississippi Review Prize, judged by Frederick Barthelme. The next book on the list is Memento Park by Mark Sarvis. I haven't read this one. I understand that it's um, a Holocaust era book. Well, actually, I think it takes place after the Holocaust, but it's about Nazi looted art during the Holocaust and, uh, you know, family history in that vein. Um, I, I try to, I tend to stay away from a lot of Holocaust fiction and, and uh, be judicious in what I read and what I don't read in this subject, so I don't know. I mean, although this is up for an award, so, you know, it ga gathers more attention than those that aren't, I suppose. But anyway, it has won some awards. Uh, it is the winner of the 2019 Association for Jewish Libraries Jewish Fiction Award. It is one of Entertainment Weekly's 20 books to read in March, and one of Time Out's 11 books you'll want to binge read this month. Figured that would add some flavor to put those in. <laughs> and the final book is Underground Fugue by Margot Singer. This is a book that takes place around the time of the London train bombings, and uh, it also involves artwork, and it involves a, a relationship between a, a Jewish and an Iranian person. And so, you know, that all, that gets to me because, you know, that seems, you know, unusual. Uh, it's something I haven't read anything about, and so that automatically gets my attention. So I think I might try to read this book, especially if it wins. <laughs> and it might, uh, you know, you never know. Uh, although uh, I couldn't find Underground Fugue winning any awards on its own yet, so maybe that means it wouldn't win. Maybe it does. You know, again, I don't have any actual stats. <laughs> but uh, Margot Singer is uh, also a short story writer, and her collection, The Pale of Settlement, has been on my Goodreads TBR since 2016, which <laughs> I guess is another reason I might want to try to read her. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that entire collection actually has won some awards, The Pale of Settlement has, uh, including the Flannery O'Connor Award for Short Fiction, the Reform Judaism Prize for Jewish Fiction, and the Glasgow Prize for Emerging Writers, so that's pretty cool. So at the end of the day, can I really say what will win or not? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I don't have no idea. Going off of the two books I've read, <laughs> I'm thinking The Weight of Ink. I mean, it just, and it has a lot of clout, too. I mean, just in general, I think it has more clout. It had more awards. Uh, it had more likes in the uh, Twitter announcement for the, uh, for the finalist list. Uh, it's just so sprawling and epic. Uh, but who knows? I'm hoping uh, this book and Underground Few can also live up. <laughs> we'll see. So that about covers it for me now. Uh, of course, uh, I'm going against uh, my last video that I made where I said I'd have a Friday Reads uh, video up because I'm getting this one up after Friday. So. <laughs> but I'm hoping to be back after this weekend and then I will uh, recap what I've been reading uh, the last several days. So uh, stay tuned. And in the meantime, I'll also leave information for the uh, 2019 Sammy Root Prize uh, down below. The winner should be announced in May, and uh, and sometime after that I plan to have up my own reviews of the winner and two of the other finalists, as is my custom. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.